Okay, uh, so let's first see that how we can collect case uh, by using the streaming API. So uh, streaming API mean, means that we are uh, creating a connection, a live, long live connection between our uh, Python notebook and also the uh, Twitter server so that we will collect uh, the tweets in the near real time. And some parameters that we can use uh, to collect tweet by using stream API are uh, track parameter, so which defines the keywords that you want to query. So without defining the track, you will collecting any random tweets all over the world. Uh, so the track will determine the keywords that uh, will contained in the re uh, in the collected tweets. So uh, here are some examples at how the uh, how the track can work. Uh, the second uh, most important parameter is called locations. So location can define that which geographic areas that you want to collect tweets from. Uh, so if you define that locations, only tweets within that defined location will be collected. Uh, so the format is that you need to define the bounding box. Okay, uh, so for example, this is uh, the Harrisonburg, and you have to find out the minimal rectangle that cover uh, the Harrisonburg, okay? And you should you need to uh, provide a pair of the longitude and also latitude. Okay, remember longitude first, latitude second. So for this bounding box, you need to provide uh, two longitude latitudes, so two coordinates. The first one is this one, the southwest, and the second one is this one, that is northeast, okay? So for example, this is uh, longitude is minus 80, okay, and latitude is 70, okay, and uh, this one will be minus 81 and also 71, okay, so that the bounding box will be uh, this, so those four numbers, okay. So that will be the bounding box, okay? So remember that the southwest corner first, and also uh, the format is that we should put latitude first and also longitude the second, okay? Uh, so here are some examples, okay? So if you are going to collect tweets from San Francisco, so that's how the parameter look like. Uh, if you want to collect data from New York, so that's how the uh, bounding box look like. Uh, however, so pay attention that, so remember that we are going to define the bounding box. So if you define bounding box like this, so you will collect tweets that inside those your start areas, okay? You will also collect tweets that outside of your start area but within the bounding box, okay? So that means you will have some uh, re the tweets that you may not want, but that will be also still retained in your results. So you have to fill out those tweets later on. So that second thing keep in mind. And, uh, another thing that keep in mind is that when you use two parameters, I don't recommend use two parameters together uh, because the relationship between track and also location is all relationship. Okay, so that means that if you define two parameters, the retained tweets will be either containing the keywords or inside of this location, okay? So if you want type tweets talking about election and uh, and also defines the latitude longitude in Harrisonburg, so the tweets will be either talking about election but not from Harrisonburg, or that is from Harrisonburg but not necessarily talking about the election. Okay, so let's see our example here. So here we first we need to authorize that stream API, so let's around that cell. And now we can define those parameters. So we can define the trend and also we can define the location. So in this case, the, the key um, keywords is the election. And also location will be that I provide the bounding box in Harrisonburg. Okay. And now we can run this uh, cell that we can collect tweets. Uh, so pay special attention here. So if you are saying track equals track, and now the filter track equals track, 
and we will be connecting to it that talking about election only. However, so if you see, if you put the both parameter like location equals location, track equals track, and then we are connect to it that talking about election, all the tweets is from Harrisonburg. Okay, um, so uh, in some cases that might be something that you want, but um, for me, I really cannot think uh, um, a scenario that we want that kind of tweet. So I would say either we keep track equals track, okay, so that we are collect location only, elections only, or if we keep like location equals location, so that we are collect tweets in specific area only. Okay, uh, so in this case, let's say that we are going to collect tweets that are talking about election. And every time when we collect tweets, so uh, we will have a tweet ID being printed out. So that's right. Okay, and now you can see that now uh, uh, we have uh, more and more tweets. You can see every time we have some tweets being collected. Okay, uh, so let's stop that one. Let's talk about the REST API. So REST API is, is more like uh, you send out a request and also it will return a collection of tweets that match up your specific queries. Um, so however, if the, the search API cannot uh, return, the standard search API will not return all the tweets. So we do have limitations for the standard API. So for example, uh, for the standard REST API, so every 50 minutes window, you can only make this number of requests. And for each single request, you can make no more than 100 tweets. We are not written no more than 100 tweets. Okay, so here are some parameters. Uh, the queue parameter is similar to track parameter, so that defines the keywords. So for example, uh, you can define, specify any keyword that you want returned in your kits, uh, used in, in your return tweets. And also you can also define a geocode parameter. The format is, is different from, from the stream API. In the REST API, you have specified latitude first, longitude, and also radius. And don't forget the unit. So for example, it can be like this, latitude, Longitude, radius with a unit. So, for example, this is a Harrisonburg, and if you want, if you want collect tweets within this area, so you have to define the centroid of this uh, of Harrisonburg, which will be the latitude first and the longitude second. Okay, so this is different from stream API, and also you have to tell the radius. Okay, and in the radius, you have to tell the the distance and also the unit. Okay, uh, at similar to stream API, uh, that you may have to set outside of your start area, but still within this uh, circle. Okay, so that's something that you should keep in mind. Uh, you can also define a count so that the number of tweets that have been returned in each single request. The default value, which is also the maximum value, is one hundred for a standard REST API. Okay, and also another tricky part is that the relationship between Q and geocode is N. Okay, Okay. so for example, if you define like correct tweet talking about election and also in Harrisonburg, it will return tweets that in Harrisonburg and within that location. Okay, so that is REST API. Okay, so let's see a demo here. So let's say we are using REST API. So first, we need to authorize the REST API. And secondly, let's say that we define uh, the parameters. So we define that count equals 100. A geocode, that is also uh, in Harrisonburg in this case. And Q equals election. So we want to find out the tweets that contain election and also in Harrisonburg. Okay, so let's define those parameters. And now let's run this uh, Python code that we will uh, collect 100 tweets and also we'll insert that into our uh, database. Okay, 
So now you can see there are less than 100 tweets. That is because right now we have uh, fewer tweets that in Harrisonburg and also that also talk, uh, talking about election. Uh, we also mentioned that for the standard REST API, you can collect tweets up to seven days. Okay, uh, seven days. So how can we collect the historic tweets or how can we collect tweets that in the past seven days? So that is something that we need to use the timeline. So imagine that um, tweets are returned, that the, the latest tweet will be returned first. Okay, and all the tweets will be returned later. So here, in each single returned um, bunch of tweets, we do have the since ID and also the maximum ID. So since ID can tell you that the, the most returned tweets, okay, and also the maximum ID can tell you that the older tweets, okay. So by using since ID and also maximum ID, so we can retrieve the tweets that uh, from first result, we get the, the oldest ID and we set the oldest ID as our maximum ID. Okay, and we can get the previous tweets. So by doing that multiple times, so we are able to retrieve tweets that uh, sent out several days ago, up to seven days by using standard REST API. Okay. And however, so you have to be very cautious because remember that every 15 minutes window, you can only send out all hand requests. Okay, uh, so by using this timeline while well loop, so it will use your reach, uh, you will reach your rate limit very, very fast. Okay, so be cautious of using this one. Okay, so let's try it. So let's say here we define since that equals zero. So, uh, and we use this while loop. And here you still need to use the queue and also geocode. So those are the same parameters that you defined earlier. And let's run this while loop. And you will see that uh, more and more tweets are coming out. And also you can see if you look at date, you can see the tweets that from previous days now are coming out. Okay, But you cannot reach tweets that older than seven days. Uh, unless you're using uh, a premier API. 